the geometry of, uh, of, of similarity of functions. Thank you for, I would like to thank everyone for inviting me and I would like also to uh, just uh, to, to say happy birthday to Pepe Seattle and uh, it is really a very good occasion and it's really a very good possibility to give a talk on his conference and because of him the conference is of very high level I, just, I also would like to congratulate the organizer for uh, just organizing of this sort of high level conference. And I really feel very much afraid to speak here in this sort of high level conference. And about Pepe, that uh, the story is that we met basically exactly 20 years ago for the first time. So that's uh, exactly 20 years ago. And we met at IMPA when we bought for this at in Rio de Janeiro. And uh, you know, I was uh, just giving some talks in Camacho seminar. And then Camacho uh, just presented me uh, Pepe and said, You should talk. And so the, the good thing that we met, I really did not realize that it is the same Seate who is from the uh, Verkovsky. Uh, just Gomez Monseate and Rakovsky Index. So that, and uh, really we were talking about Milner vibrations. And then, uh, since we were talking about Milner vibrations, then I really did not realize what's happening and that it is the same person. But uh, this person uh, was already for me, uh, let's say, somehow a classical guy at uh, that, that time. And, uh, because, you know, I heard about this index already before that from uh, my uh, good friend Sasha Reznikov and uh, we were discussing about this index and that time uh, really I had uh, some uh, ideas that uh, this index has a metric flavor. But you know what happened that still I did not discover any metric flavor of this Seattle uh, Rotovsky Commission. So that it should be something that, uh, like metric theory of foliations, it should exist. But uh, unfortunately, it was not really uh, created. So that, uh, okay. So this was just a great introduction. And then today I will uh, make an introduction. As usual, the introduction just consumes basically more than the part of the talk. So I will talk about the Lipschitz geometry of functions. And the Lipschitz geometry of functions is a different object from the Lipschitz geometry of sets. And then uh, this is the equivalence of the, uh, the, the definition of the equivalence, the Lipschitz equivalence of sets. So that uh, there exists a bilipsic map, right? And uh, just a map satisfying, satisfies these conditions, right? And uh, then, uh, as usual, lecture geometry is inside, it's just somewhere in between the topology and the differential analysis. Because, to say, if you have just smooth equivalence of sets, then uh, they are Lipschitz equivalent. If you have Lipschitz equivalent, then they are uh, definitely homeomorphic, topologically. So that, uh, this Lipschitz geometry is somehow an intermediate subject. And if we work with uh, by Lipschitz geometry of singularities, it is somehow uh, the, the, the situation is that if we consider differential or analytic equivalence of singularities, then immediately we have moduli. So the, uh, we, we just consider the uh, situation where we have four straight lines going through one point, then uh, already in this case we have the cross ratio, who is uh, just 
an environment. So that even in this case, we have uh, the we immediately have the modular. But this is not the situation of the Lipschitz geometry of the set. And let me just cite uh, the theorem of uh, Polish mathematician Tadeusz Mostowski, Polish mathematician Guillaume Valet, and French mathematician Adam Polishins. <laughs> say uh, that if we consider the such as equivalence classes of uh, no no this is Lipschitz equivalence then this is Lipschitz equivalence before you go to before you go to is that bijection bijection or not bijection bijection is always a bijection because it's So that you have two metric spaces, and then you have a, a map who is Lipschitz and who is in work with Lipschitz. So thank you for the correction. Okay, and then uh, here if we consider the set of algebraic sets defined by polynomials of degree less or equal than k, then the set of equivalence classes is finite. So this is a finiteness theorem just a uh, finiteness theorem of, uh, uh, let's say, of, uh, first of Mostovsky who proved it for the uh, complex algebraic sets, then the uh, theorem of Paroshinsky uh, who proved it for, uh, let's say, first for a real algebraic set. You mean by Here I mean by Lipschitz equivalents. Here I mean by Lipschitz equivalents. So then, uh, this is the finite theorem of this. Uh, and why I mention Ballet? Because uh, Ballet proved, an, in fact, slightly stronger result that uh, he is, in his case, the Bilipschitz map could be uh, uh, semi algebraic. The Bilipschitz map between uh, semi algebraic or algebraic sets is also semi algebraic. So this is uh, uh, slight improvements. Uh, by uh, Guillaume Ballet, by this Polish mathematician, of the uh, previous, uh, of the theorem which was proved by uh, Mastowski and Perusians. So then we, we are in a very good situation. A classification is possible. Okay? One can classify the things. Then let's uh, do uh, let's classify, and uh, this is a theorem the classification of germ of surfaces with isolated singularity. Surface means that uh, semi-algebraic, uh, real algebraic or semi-algebraic surface with uh, isolated singularity with a connected link. What does it mean? A link, link is an intersection of our singular set of our singular surface with a small sphere. So that. Uh, the, 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 this is by Lipschitz equivalent to the uh, to uh, a germ of a core with uh, respect to the inner matrix. This is the situation. So that we have um, connected, uh, we, we have a semi-algebraic surface uh, with a connected link, and uh, here we have a beta core, which is just a revolution surface of a cusp, where beta is just p divided by q. So then any semi-algebraic surface with isolated singularity is uh, with a connected link is by Lipschitz equivalent to the cuspid of surface with respect to the inner metric. So this theorem is somehow a model theorem uh, for me, let's say that I would like to have uh, just this sort of model theorems for uh, uh, basically or everywhere, but uh, the life is more difficult than that, that uh, for real surfaces uh, with respect to the, uh, to, to, to the Euclidean, with respect to the outer metric, 
you, you, you cannot have uh, anything like this, and uh, you, 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 you see the reason. The reason is that this distance, you can have, for instance, two points who can be uh, closer, uh, the, 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 whose distance uh, between them would be closer in the link uh, than uh, the distance between uh, the another points. So that, and, uh, and then you can iterate this situation and uh, make a lot of pictures, let's say, uh, that uh, are similar to that. Uh, and even, you know, that for, for instance, one of the classical situation is a complex curve. A complex curve, curve is a real algebraic surface, right? A complex curve is a real algebraic surface, and if we think about a complex curve with respect to the inner metric, it's just a plane. But if we uh, think about it as an uh, embedded surface, then you have all the curve set that uh, presents the uh, embedded options uh, classification of them. And this is a result of Farman this year. Uh, somehow there were unpublished papers of Farman this year about that. And then uh, later, uh, this result was uh, somehow rediscovered and uh, uh, reproved by several authors, including uh, Alexander Fernandez, Walter Neumann, and Pichon. And then there are several, uh, just one. The several modifications of the uh, different, let's say, different kind of uh, results uh, related to the outer metric. And still, the problem of the classification of surfaces with respect to outer metric is not solved. And uh, there are uh, several reasons for that, because the, uh, basically the uh, surface with respect to outer metric is somehow behaves as a function. And uh, if you consider the literature geometry of functions, then uh, we are very far, and I will show you why. So then uh, this is a definition of by Lipschitz equivalence of maps. So then uh, I just make uh, maps, or, uh, or okay, I will restrict myself to that functions, and uh, then this is a equivalence of functions, so that uh, where k is uh, r or uh, r or c, and we, 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 we see that this is a classical uh, definition of the singularity theory, where you have the polyptions, uh, let's say polyptions, by Lipschitz change of coordinates in the image, by Lipschitz change of coordinates in pre-image, and we get one function uh, from another. And uh, uh, really, you know, when I was uh, working on the uh, surfaces, I was basically um, almost sure that there is no problem with the functions, that uh, the classification of functions will be, uh, will have the Mastowski Poroshinsky result, and I really uh, was trying to get it, and by some strange reason I didn't succeed. And, and that is why, uh, and this is why I didn't succeed. Because uh, there, is a, there is a theorem of Poroshinsky and Henri, uh, just they presented to family, even uh, quasi homogeneous family, who admit um, uh, continuous modulus. So then the set of equivalence classes of functions with respect to the uh, A equivalence, uh, we, we, we don't have the finite, because of the Parashinsky and the Henry theorem, we don't have a Parashinsky and Mostowski. Okay, and then uh, there was another result who so somehow confirmed the result of uh, Barbashinsky and Henry about the quasi-homogeneous functions. I forgot to write here that we consider 
the quasi homogeneous functions from C2 to C, we consider the uh, quasi homogeneous functions with, from C2 to C, then we have the rigidity theorem by Alexandre Fernandez and Maria Ruiz. Rigidity, in this case, rigidity means that Lipschitz equivalence, A Lipschitz equivalence implies the uh, analytic equivalence. So then, uh, if you have the, this rigidity theorem, then we cannot expect to have a finiteness theorem. So then the uh, Lipschitz geometry of functions became a difficult subject. So we should find uh, a way to classify them. And uh, we tried to uh, just mention this result uh, just uh, by myself and Alexandre Fernandez and uh, Daniel Conosolo, where we uh, consider a quasi homogeneous functions of Herbert Triangle. Herbert Triangle is just a, let's say, a cusp of triangle bounded from one side by uh, by uh, realignment from the other side by x to the alpha, this function. Just even in this field of triangle, if we can see, we can, uh, uh, we, we, we can just explicitly present the moduli. So that uh, this is nothing, it doesn't give any use uh, from the uh, Parochian standard theorem, but the point is that we, uh, in this case, for a given degree, we just uh, make uh, the total description of modular. So, uh, then, uh, but what can we do? Uh, there is another equivalence for functions. Uh, this is the uh, k Lipschitz equivalence. The k Lipschitz equivalence, uh, it is uh, somehow a different thing, and Professor Abramo was uh, probably about was talking about k equivalence uh, when he was talking about the curves, uh, then uh, we can have uh, this sort of k equivalence, but Lipschitz k equivalence of uh, the uh, functions. And what really happens in the world of uh, functions? So, what is the similarity? Just uh, you can see this commutative diagram. But uh, I can uh, just uh, explain the geometrical model for that. The geometrical model is the following. The geometrical model is that you have a graph of a function, then you have by each its mass in the uh, set, where we, in the product, where you have the graph of the function, and you can see that the by each its mass who preserves the vertical. Will be just that uh, the image of a vertical line will be a vertical line. So it's a bilinear image in uh, sorry, it's a bilinear map in the R M times R who preserves the vertical lines. So that in, in the case, uh, in fact, this is contact this contact equivalence, uh, k equivalence uh, was considered by John Mazur in the uh, in the smooth classification. In the small case, k equivalence is quite uh, close to the uh, to R to, to A equivalence or to R equivalence. But in the, the case of Lipschitz geometry, there is a drastic difference. So here is the uh, finiteness theorem. In the case of the k equivalence of polynomials. We have a finiteness theorem. Just due to uh, myself and uh, Alexandre Fernandez, uh, Maria Ruas, and João Carlos Costa. And this is indeed, I just give another reference to Atom, because uh, it uses the uh, Mastowski Poroshinsky theorem for the sets, for just unions of graphs and uh, the, uh, the floors. So there you have a floor, which is up to the n. And then you have a graph of the function. You, 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 you have a theorem, uh, just finite the theorem, just as a corollary of the finite the theorem for the same algebraic sets. So this is uh, how we have the proof of this. And indeed, uh, using this, we can 
uh, uh, easily shown that uh, uh, order or a multiplicity of uh, uh, function is also a bilateral environment. This is uh, a result of Trotman and Driesler. But, uh, in, indeed, we can show that this way we can show that this is uh, the uh, this is uh, this is also an environment. And as I promised to Martin, we can make a commercial break. And in the commercial break before that, I would uh, make an advertisement about some theorems in all of the classifications. Uh, just come back to uh, surfaces with, uh, with isolation singularities, right? That if we have a, a surface with isolated singularity, indeed, we can make a, 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 a similar sort of theorem uh, for uh, non-isolated singularities. And it is more difficult to draw and more difficult to uh, write down, right? But uh, this is, so you, you can divide into some canonical Herder triangles, means uh, some canonical uh, pieces, and uh, this division into canonical pieces is also canonical. I will talk about this later. But then uh, this theorem is about semi-algebraic sets. Uh, and uh, we also have that any structure obtained like this is realized by uh, a semi-algebraic set. Then uh, we can make an abstract structure and ask what is realized by an algebraic set? Who are the abstract structures who are realized by algebraic sets? So this is the first commercial break, making the, uh, just an uh, advertisement to some people uh, to walk, uh, just to try to walk in this uh, theory, because, uh, you, you know, I, uh, there are plenty of questions, and uh, it sounds to be accessible. It sounds to be accessible, and uh, then you have uh, Sullivan and uh, Parashinsky uh, McGrory conditions for the uh, for topological realization. And then uh, who are the uh, algebra uh, metric realization? Okay, this is the first commercial break. There will be more. Okay, so just then uh, we uh, have this theorem and this theorem was generalized by uh, Maria Ruas and Guillaume Valent for the maps. They have, the, they, they have also the finiteness like uh, theorem of the maps with respect to the contact equivalence. So that you can uh, the Lipschitz contact equivalence. So that, uh, this is also classifiable. So the maps are also classifiable and uh, Basically, uh, a similar technique works. It needs some more work, of course, but uh, you, you need some Guillaume Valet constructions. Or maybe you don't. A small commercial break. Maybe you don't. Maybe you can, can, uh, you can have an easy uh, proof of the uh, Ruas Valet theorem, just without uh, a big theory constructed by Guillaume Valet. Okay? So now, uh, again, the classification is possible, and let's classify. Let's classify and let, let's do the first uh, uh, tentative. It means, uh, let, let, let's try to make uh, just the first basic step, which is a uh, classification of functions of R2 to C, to R2 to R. So it's a pizza, but it's not a commercial product. That when advertisement of pizza is not at all a commercial thing. So that with this pizza, indeed, it is a uh, uh, what is a pizza? It is an invariant uh, of uh, of uh, uh, it's, it, it's an invariant of functions from uh, definable indeed definable. I, I, I will say I will. Uh, show everything in the sub-analytic world, but we can make uh, the, basically the same theory in the, for the definable functions uh, from R2 to R, 
uh, with respect to this nature of contact equivalence. Okay, so this is uh, the, 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 this what we are going to talk based on the, the joint work and indeed on the joint project, which is a uh, work in progress. And during our walk in progress, so, uh, then we can talk about this later. So that what is the uh, progress and it's progress of where we go, right? And walk uh, means just walk. Uh, just also invented by, uh, invented by other persons and then take it to rules as this invention for the moment. Okay, and just the mathematicians just somehow use the ideas of another mathematicians for their for their theorem, their presentation. Okay, and then uh, let, 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 let's make, and the, the, it's also a work in progress uh, of myself, uh, Andrei Gabrielov, uh, Alexander Fernandez, and Vincent Branchon. So this, is, this will be the first part. Indeed, our project is to make a, a classification of surfaces with respect to the Euclidean nature. This is what we are doing. And, uh, the classification of functions with respect to k equivalence is, uh, let's say, the first uh, step of this project. Okay, so that, uh, let me define the pizza, right? It's strange to define the pizza, right? But, uh, mm -hmm. Does pizza need a definition? Mm -hmm. It does. So, then, first of all, what is the, just a classical thing in the, uh, let's say, semi-algebraic and definable uh, world, what is an order of tangency of arcs? So you have one point, you have two arcs passing through this point, and we make, a, uh, we define the order of tangency in the following way. We just uh, make, uh, we intersect these curves by the small sphere, and we parameterize by this intersection, okay? And then we, just for this parameterization, we have the piezo expansion, and we have this, uh, the way we have this exponent. Okay, and then we define what is an order of a function on an arc. So we have an arc, we have a function, and uh, in this arc we also have this sort of uh, order of that, and uh, this is the order of a function in an arc. Okay? So this is also the PVSO, so that uh, uh, the gamma f uh, will be at the order of a function in an arc. So then the, this is a Nash philosophy which is presented here by Maria Pen, that if you want to understand the function, we should understand what happens in the function in the uh, arcs, basically in the set, in the space of arcs. But it's, here it's real setting, it's not a complex setting, but I consider the real arcs rather than real arcs or even definable arcs. If we, because, uh, you know, everything that I will be talking about works for a polynomially bounded to minimal structure in the same way it, as it, it works for the uh, for uh, uh, sub-analytic or semi-algebraic functions. So that, uh, somebody who doesn't know the theory of definable functions can uh, always suppose that we are semi-algebraic or sub-analytic and for other people I will uh, make a comment uh, what really happens in the definable world in the uh, global. So that uh, here there are the basic, basic things and uh, we can define a width function. Uh, we, uh, we, we must define a width function. So first of all, we have a Hilbert triangle. We have a Hilbert triangle and we have a function restricted to this Hilbert triangle. And in uh, this uh, function, we have the set of all the uh, orders of the function in all the uh, definable arcs who live in this triangle. Okay? And uh, this is uh, QT of F. This is the set, uh, this is a segment. Indeed, in Q, 
if we have a, a sub-analytic or semi-algebraical, and in F, F means a field of exponent of the, uh, of the corresponding uh, polynomial rebounded dominoes. Yeah. So that we have, uh, uh, we have a segment in the field of exponents of uh, them. Uh, so that we have this, uh, this is a domain of our function, and then we have uh, uh, the V function itself, which is defined like this. Uh, we take uh, the we will take this segment and we take a Q in this segment and take a gamma, which is an arc whose, where the domain of our function is Q and we define the U of Q, the width of our function in this, uh, 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 in this arc. What you should say, why well, it is a function. Yeah, it's not. It's a multiple. It is a multifunction, then uh, that it is uh, because you know for, uh, for 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 plenty of functions you can have uh, just several different arcs where the function has different orders. But indeed, this is uh, this is a multifunction, and then we can even uh, there, there is a definition. It is um, uh, that we have elementary triangles. Elementary triangles are uh, the triangle is elementary. The, I mean, curvilinear triangle. When I when I, yes. Uh, I, I, with a beef, it's a beef. Uh, just let's see. Yeah. Here is the definition of the. We take an R and we take uh, the uh, a zone. Oh, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't pronounce that. We take a zone uh, just uh, where the function have the same order as in our arc. So it's a width of the our function f in our arc is the size of the zone where our uh, function has the same order. It's basically the uh, infimal, uh, the minimal size, or, or minimal means minimal in the in terms of the exponent, the maximum, the geometrically maximum size of the zone where the function, where, where in all the arcs in this zone, the uh, function has uh, the same order. This is a width, okay? So that we just uh, where uh, uh, so so we, we can uh, see in. Here in this triangle, so that we take a triangle, right? And we take an R leaves in this triangle, and I take a, a, me, a maximum triangle where the function has uh, the same the order same as in our triangle. So, uh, what's uh, okay? So that we define the function, and again, this V function uh, in this. Thing is uh, basically a multifunction, right? But uh, a triangle is called elementary if uh, the width function is well defined on it. So then, who is a pizza? Pizza is a partition of a term of R2 and 0 into elementary triangles, but not only elementary triangles, into the triangles where the width function is uh, well defined and moreover where it is an affine function. Okay? So that uh, uh, and so that a pizza is a partition of a germ into uh, elementary triangles such that in on each triangle uh, you have uh, our uh, function is uh, you just is well defined, okay? So pizza. <laughs> so we have a, 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 a weak function means here uh, the things, right? So you have, a, you just make a partition of our thing, right? Of our germ into uh, <coughs> small pieces such that uh, this, uh, and uh, you, you can say that in Brazil you, have, you can be served 
by this sort of pizza, you can have quatro queijos, calabres, or something like this. And then uh, just uh, these uh, different teas, uh, they correspond to the different uh, width functions. So that in each, uh, and on each piece, our width function is, uh, let's say, is well defined, and moreover, in each piece, uh, the, our uh, our function is, uh, let's say, piecewise uh, uh, That is just uh, the logic of a right? In each piece, uh, our function is a fine. So then the theorem. Pizza exists, right? It's, uh, pizza exists. For each function, there is a pizza related uh, uh, to this function. It's a good theorem, to, a good theorem is especially pronounced in Mexico, that the pizza exists. <laughs> yeah, there are some Italian restaurants in Egypt, yeah. <laughs> okay, that uh, pizza exists, and uh, moreover, pizza is not unique. Pizza is not unique, why? Because, uh, you, you know, there are plenty of ways to construct a pizza. There are plenty of ways to, how you to, to, to make it, how to prepare it. And uh, at least you can have the following situation, which is, uh, the, uh, uh, here is a black elder triangle. It's a sort of uh, black triangle where, uh, for instance, our function, uh, our Q is just, uh, our Q of this triangle is just uh, one point. Okay, and uh, the new is just uh, this triangle itself. It's the, the, remark, the first remark, but then uh, uh, the pizza is not unique. The second remark, uh, that uh, a pizza is somewhat the same thing in composition. Why? Because there are always uh, big, fat triangles, thick triangles. And uh, for the polynomial functions, we can call that uh, the multiplicity triangles, uh, which is uh, it's exactly for, uh, as we have in the paper of George and Grisler, where they uh, where they indeed the Q of the triangle, the interval of Q is just reduces to one point, and uh, moreover, uh, the U is just the uh, the, the mu is just the size of the triangle. So this is, yeah. What happens in the common boundary of two triangles? What happens in the common boundary of two triangles? Yeah, in, the, in this case, uh, it, 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 you, you can have the new function. I never said that it is continuous from one triangle to another triangle. Can, can it is continuous? And the mu can change and can depend on the triangle. We have, uh, indeed, we have mu in the triangle, and you have a general mu. So, that, for instance, uh, I, I never said that, that mu is continuous, right? But q is continuous. Uh, if, our, uh, oh, if our function is continuous, then q is continuous. Uh, the, 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 it just uh, depends continuously. But if we go from a triangle to a triangle, so we can have a, a triangle where the order is just a constant. And here you can uh, have a sort of growing. And we, we can have a, another thing. Yeah, so that uh, pizza is not unique, right? But what is uh, uh, what are the good news that the pieces can be simplified? There are uh, simplification procedures. So the, one of the simplification procedure, if you have a small triangle with the uh, constant Q, where the Q is reduced to a constant, but it falls, a uh, very thin. So the very thin triangle can be eaten by the thicker triangle. So the uh, thick, thick triangle can eat, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so then uh, the Thick triangle can be eaten by uh, uh, the, the thick triangle can be eaten by the thick triangle, and then uh, there is another simplification procedure uh, that uh, if you have two 
consecutive parameters where our V function is just a restriction of the V function in the uh, we can take the V function in the union, right? And make a restriction of the V function to uh, the smaller triangle. Then you can glue these two triangles to uh, this to this uh, let's say uh, to, 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 to the trap. Okay, and then this is uh, after a simplification we have a canonical piece. After the simplification we have a canonical piece. And uh, then the main theorem that uh, canonical piece is unique after a natural combinatorial equivalent. The natural combinatorial, uh, what is a combinatorial equivalent that if, if I will write a definition, it will, will take one page. What is the, uh, the combinatorial but Because you, you have this uh, uh, except of the teens, uh, of the team, you have the orientation, uh, you have uh, the sign, you have uh, uh, plenty of things, uh, plenty of combinatorics related uh, pizza. But uh, basically, it means that uh, the pizzas are combinatorial equivalent if you can just rotate them by some suitable map and uh, get from one uh, pizza another one. So, and then, uh, indeed, the pizza is a combinatorial object, right? And it is a combinatorial object, and this combinatorial object is uh, the, uh, it is a complete uh, KB matrix environment. So this pizza is a complete KB matrix environment. So this is the main theme. So then, uh, uh, just uh, another commercial break, before I will uh, just uh, speak about the proofs, that this is the now let's say semi-algebraic or sub-analytic description, right? It's semi-algebraic or sub-analytic description or even defined. And who are the pieces for the analytic functions? You definitely have to have some restrictions for the pieces for analytic functions. And I think that in that case, uh, mu should be continuous. Should be continuous when you go from triangle to triangle. Uh, but because, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, that if you uh, have the uh, semi-algebraic or uh, definable function, then can, they can have just the triangles where the uh, function just equals to zero. So that the, uh, uh, it means that if you have isolated zero, it means the Q equals to infinity. And if you have the isolated zero on an R, it means that mu also equals to infinity. But if you have uh, a, a zero uh, on the triangle, then mu is not equal to infinity. Then we have a finite mu, right? But uh, of course, it, it doesn't happen for the analytic case. But who are the uh, pieces for the analytic functions? It is, uh, I think, it's a, a plausible question. Okay. So uh, let me finish here. Let me finish at this moment. Are there any questions or comments? Function, the graph is in itself is a concave. It's just one concave. If, if we talk about the coding of concave decomposition, then the graph itself is a concave. It's not a concave, if, uh, but this uh, function, uh, this theorem also works in uh, uh, works in uh, in uh, let's say in, uh, in the case where the function is not rich. You can have leaves, not leaves a definable function, but still you can, we can have this sort of story. But then the graph is not a pancake. Then, then you, should, you should make something like pancake decomposition. But it is much uh, smaller than the decomposition into elementary returns. Uh, so, uh, the question 
sorry. Could you show us the final S theory in 4K equivalence again? I want to see whether I have a question or not. <laughs> Let me just see. This one. Terms of degree or the germs of degree less or equal to n. What does it mean? The polynomial functions of degree less or equal to n. And then you don't assume anything about isolated single No. No. And uh, so this, I mean, as far as I understood, k equivalence is at least uh, is more or less the same as the equivalence of the zero set. Of no, the function. it's not. In here, it's not. It's not. In the, in the real case, not. Ah. And in k equivalence is, uh, uh, we can prove it for the complex polynomial functions. Okay. But uh, here, in the, uh, in from C two. Okay. We can, uh, uh, if you have to reduce the problem. Yeah, then, it's, then, it's, then, then my question is yeah. empty because then it's clear. So <laughs> the second is, um, is there any kind of um, finite determinacy so that is, if you start with a complex analytic or real analytic, uh, maybe non-isolated uh, singularity, and is there, whether it's equivalent, by nature it's equivalent to a polynomial? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. I don't know the answer, but it's also a commercial advertisement. Okay. So just, you can prove it. You means you in general in the audience. Prove or just make, a, uh, let's say, by uh, finite. Uh, something uh, was done by Guillaume Vallette in this direction. Uh, he has a paper on the uh, let's say by Lipschitz key determinants, but I we, we really never made a uh, comparison with this paper. Uh, when the singularity is non-isolated, because there are no general results, but some uh, particular results, maybe by this relation, some. Uh, so uh, another. Yes. Uh, do you think that this uh, theory may help us in order to prove the strong and great conjectures of Tom? The, 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 the usual gradient conjecture is proved Would by pancakes. Yeah. Uh, now we have pizzas. Yeah. Uh, Would be, but I, I never have thought. Cigars. Yeah, uh, thank you. It's also another advertisement. Just to think, uh, to think about this uh, pieces with respect to the uh, strong tone gradient conjecture. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for the advertisement. Because to prove the existence of pizza, we use uh, the 
preparation theorem by uh, Spicer and uh, Quantum Dreams. And, uh, we have the special forms of the, uh, the special, uh, in, in indeed I wanted to show this, and uh, you just put, you, you can start directly from the Quantum Dreams Spicer preparation theorem, and you can uh, make the pizza. But the, the question is, what pizzas are realizable as analytic functions? And this is, I think, uh, it's more difficult question. Because then you cannot use uh, the preparation theorem of this one. Any other questions or comments? Uh, so, so let's thank the speaker again and then we go take a picture. Thank you.